Hello Steelers and welcome to another bench report. Uh, another Sunday, another bench report. <laughs> uh, it's been quite a busy week this week uh, from a hobby point of view. I managed to get quite a lot painted actually. Uh, first things first was I finished off the third company for the Soviets that I've been painting, the 15mm Soviets that you'll remember were the, uh, from, I got them from Battlefront. Uh, these are for old group, uh, so I, f I finished off the third company of these. Uh, so that's about, I think, about 27 figures, and then also uh, a forward observation officer. Uh, so that means I've actually now finished the entire full battalion of Soviets, uh, which is great. So that's them done. That's the basics. I also did the supports as well the other week, so I managed to to get another Ogre battalion finished up and ready and done, uh, which means they basically replaced my old 30-year-old Peter Pig figures. So uh, that's good, and I'm I'm, I'm quite chuffed with that. I've also, as well, I've done a painting video about these Soviets. It's very, or I'm working on one at the moment. Uh, I've recorded it. I just need to edit it. But that's uh, that's going to be out at some point in the future. But it's a dead easy job. You'll just uh, just look out for that at some point in the future, and I'll put it together and, and send it out. It's uh, as usual my typical um, three foot rule painting uh, method of you know uh, not doing loads of detail. <laughs> uh, the other thing I've painted as well is a through another three D house. Uh, this one, this 3D printed house, should I say, this one uh, is one of the ones that Paul from Sabotage got for me uh, with the garden as well. Uh, I just finished this off the other day. I've done a painting video on this as well because I've been threatening to do one for a long time. Again, that just needs editing and writing and, and what have you. And I also did a small brick walled yard as well. Uh, Paul had sent over a bunch of uh, walls and things for me this week uh, from Sabotage. So I just thought I'll try those out, make a little yard uh, just to, uh, to to give me an idea of how these are going to look in uh, in game terms. I was quite happy with that. Uh, also as well, I did... Uh, a bit of work on another ploughed field. Uh, this one was a small tester. Uh, I'd, I was going to try to make some more of these for the the field making video. I've done the uh, I've done the corn fields, but I haven't done the ploughed fields yet. I just haven't had a chance to do them uh, this week. But I will do, and I'm going to make a video on this. Uh, this one was just a small tester, just to see uh, how it works and uh, it, using different materials to the one I was using before and I've just been trying some out. I've also got uh, just behind me here another test piece as well that I'm doing. I'm just using again some slightly different materials on this some card. It's not really working because it, it was warping under the, the, the glue but what I've done is I've painted PVA glue on the bottom of it and it's kind of helped the warp a little bit but uh, I'm going to have to go back to plastic card I think so they're going to be a little bit more expensive but they, they uh, as I said that is, that's a work in progress and maybe something that I'll, uh, I'll do more on I'll still use it, It's just I'm just experimenting with different materials at the moment uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing this week so like I said pretty, uh, pretty busy on the, the hobby front which was quite nice managed to get uh, line drawn under a few things here and there also, uh, in the post, I got the new WSS, War Game Soldiers and Strategy magazine. This came through, uh, you see that, I was just reading that this morning. Uh, some good articles in here, quite a lot on this one. In This is uh, one to one This is a lot of stuff on the Age of Arthur. Uh, Jeremy Short, uh, one of my pals from the Lardy community, he's written a, an article on the... Um, uh, on, on the uh, his games that he's played of uh, Dux Britanniarum in there, so that's good. Joe Bilton's also got an article on uh, his Bocage as well, which is good. And Kev Pierce as well, Mr. Kev over on uh, on on Twitter, who helped me out playing Hearts of Iron Four a long back. He's uh, written a pretty good, interesting article about how to get people uh, into wargaming and there's also all the usual uh, stuff in there as well that you would expect as well so uh, well worth subscribing to Wargame Soldiers and Strategy I'd really like it it's quite it's nice independent magazine well worth checking out if you're thinking about it the other thing as well as I said is I got these two churches uh, well I got the walls first of all from Paul over at Sabotage so a big bag of those there's about four foot in there these are some old fence posts that he sent me ages ago. I just put those together, but a big bag of walls, 15mm uh, scale, so they're going to be very, very useful in future. Uh, I'll be doing bits and pieces with those. Going to get my way through all this stuff. He also sent me as well uh, two churches. I think these are actually 10mm. Um, 
uh, but they, uh, they 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 they're scalable for 15 mil on a tabletop. I think I think they'll be all right when they're out on their own in uh, in a churchyard kind of thing. So I'm going to work on those. Uh, and there's quite a huge amount of detail on those. They are really nice models. So thanks for that, Paul. If you are watching. The other thing as well he sent over were some gravestones. So again, I'm going to do some. I'm going to do a little graveyard at some point. Uh, that's going to be the next thing. I just want to, again, just to, to add a bit of detail and interest to a tabletop. It's very easy. You know, these things are they're pretty simple just to do, uh, just to, to add that little bit of a, a, a touch. And he also sent some fences as well. Uh, these are primarily for the fields I'm currently making at the moment. So I just wanted to do some individual fences here, uh, two sizes of lo longer ones, and also these smaller single gates as well. Uh, sorry, not uh, not fences, gates. So they're going to be used on the uh, the fields when I get round to it. Uh, so that all came from Paul. Uh, it was it was in, in tension, uh, in, initially it was meant to just be these gates, and then everything else turned up. I decided to add everything else as well while I was buying stuff. <laughs> Uh, also, Richard Hogg as well uh, has very kindly sent me four more Mormon Herringtons. Uh, these are the uh, early war British armoured cars. I don't know if you remember, but I, I did have four of these, but I, I buggered them up and the, it was during that heat wave and my, um, uh, my, my varnish went mad. Uh, it's never happened before, but it's, it went mad and it uh, clouded the, 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 the originals and it's ruined them. So he's very kindly printed off four more for me and sent those down. So I'll get those done at some point. The other thing that came through the post as well is this. Uh, from Two Fat Lardies. Uh, well, this is actually a printed version of their PDF of uh, Stout Hearts and Iron Troopers. This is uh, from, I got this printed at Docs Direct. Uh, just check them out, docsdirect.com I think they are, they're very good, they, uh, they'll they do things very quickly, it's worthwhile checking out them and using them, I use them a lot for, for printing stuff out. This is PDF over on the Two Fat Lardies uh, website, I've had a copy of it for years, uh, since about 2014 in fact, but my old printed copy was falling to pieces and I'd lost the PDF a long time ago. So I just bought it again, £7, uh, and now I think it was about another tenner or so for, for the printing of this. Uh, and this is basically uh, scenarios for Through the Mud and the Blood, uh, my favourite First World War war game, uh, the large skirmishes by the two fat lardies. Uh, I am going to do a review on this, and I'm actually going to do a review on Through the Mud and the Blood as well at some point, because uh, I'm currently playing, a, I'm in the middle of playing a game of Through the Mud and the Blood uh, for a video. But I'm going to do a, a review on them as well, because I, I don't think a lot of people have heard of them, or, you know, they're, they're, they're quite a, a relatively unknown Lardy rule set. And for, if you're going to do skirmishing in the First World War, then this is the stuff to do. And this is a really, really good set, uh, a good uh, introduction. You could use this for any other rules. doesn't have to be through the mud and the blood because they're really good scenarios. But obviously it's, you know, set out for the mud and the blood. Uh, but it's got some really good scenarios in there. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about it because, as I say, I'm going to do a proper review of this anyway and show you what's in there at some point. The other thing as well I got in the post was this. This is the... Armchair General, this is Can You Defeat the Nazis by John Buckley, a historian down at Wolverhampton uh, University. I first heard about this with um, on Henry Hyde's podcast on Battle Chats with uh, Spencer Jones. And he was talking about they're making a, a they're writing currently at the moment a second world a first world war version of it. This is the second world war one. I'd not heard of it before, but it's basically a choose your own adventure historical choose your own adventure. So, for example, here it says uh, the, the each each chapter or each each little part has a decision to make, and you make you know it says. Uh, explore other alternatives, go to section 7, page 62, or section 3, page 34, and examine what might have happened if Halifax had become Prime Minister. Or, to explore the history of these events, go to the historical note, page 65. So it's like it's a, a nice nice way of of, uh, of basically introducing people to, to historic history and alternative history, and also, you know, how, how, um, how those outcomes have affected... Uh, history itself and you know what has actually happened things and things uh, and, and just the alternatives for it so I'm looking forward to actually diving into that again at some point if I get a chance I'll probably do a review on this uh, let me just give you a quick uh, run through of what we've got so we've got Britain's Darkest Hour summer of 40, 1940 the Mediterranean Gamble the war in North Africa Stalin's war war on the Eastern Front Midway decision in the Pacific 
the Bomber Offensive, Strategy and Morality and the Road to Dresden, Casablanca, Roosevelt and Chil uh, Churchill's Strategic Choices, Race to the Rhine, Arnhem, Operation Market Garden, September 44, and then The Bomb, Copenhagen, Manhattan and Hiroshima. So, uh, you know, some of the, the major themes of the Second World War are covered in there. And again, it's just like an interesting way of exploring history, really. And written by, you know, a, a, an academic historian as well. So somebody who knows their, uh, their soul. So probably worth checking out. Uh, Game-wise this week... Uh, well, last Sunday I took Arkanova over to my mate's house and uh, the zoo building game. Uh, we had a good. It was the first time I played it multiplayer, and it's the first time they played it, and it's a great game. It took us a long time to play it because explaining the, the various aspects of it took a while. But once we got it, we were speeding through, and it was a really good game. Uh, I came last, <laughs> and then uh, on Thursday night I played with Dave PQ17 at the club. Uh, which is a GMT game, uh, one of the modern hex encounter kind of games. Uh, this is of the Arctic convoys in the Second World War. I was a Germans trying to stop the convoys getting through to Murmansk from uh, from from Iceland, uh, and Dave took the Allies trying to get those convoys through. Uh, I had the Tirpitz and the Schwer and uh, Prince Eugen. Uh, all three got sunk, <laughs> so I lost. <laughs> but it was a learning game, and it's, it's actually interesting. There's some really nice mechanics in it where you can't actually see what the players, your enemy, uh, enemy's units are. You have to go and reconnaissance them with aircraft and with ships, and also the weather plays an important part as well. There's quite a lot of nice things in it. Those kind of games, for me, are probably just a, little, a smidge too complex, but they're the kind of thing that somebody who's really into that period and that particular, you know, has got a real interest in that particular kind of uh, conflict would will really, you know, enjoy those kind of things. But for me, it's like it's just that little step beyond what I want from a game. I'm kind of, I like something that's uh, less uh, less chart heavy. Uh, but I can see their appeal to, to certain players and you know certain types of players that like those kind of things. But it was still a fun game, and I'd more than happily play it again, uh, knowing now what I knew, what I didn't know then. <laughs> uh, and also, I mentioned as well, I'm playing. I'm currently playing a game of Through the Mud and the Blood. Uh, this is from the Stout Hearts Nine Troopers um, uh, uh, supplement that I got. Uh, this is a defence of a bridge by, uh, I've got to remember his name, Robert Gee, uh, the VC winner uh, in 1917, November 1917, where he uh, he, he won his VC uh, uh, defending a position against a German attack. Uh, I was going to record it yesterday, I'm recording the, the game, but uh, I was rec recording it yesterday, I was just too knackered because I didn't sleep very well on Friday, so uh, Sunday... I am uh, much brighter, uh, more uh, more alert, and I'm going to finish the game off and get it recorded and uh, put together for you for a video. Uh, apologies for the jump cut there, but uh, just remembered, uh, no, I forgot to say in the uh, the original video, uh, on Tuesday I'm going to be doing a Ask Me Anything uh, video, a live stream, uh, my normal time, 7.30 UK time. Uh, so tune into that. Uh, I'll be taking. I'll take questions live. Uh, I've also got uh, quite a few from other people as well. So if nobody asks questions during the live ones, I'll I'll go to the ones that have been asked. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, uh, then just stick them in the uh, comments of this video, uh, and I will get to them. Uh, the idea is either to do a uh, a live one for people who are able to attend that, and if there's enough demand, then I will do a separate one with all the other questions that I got uh, from other people, and also. Uh, October's schedule will be out today as well, uh, it should be on the screen right now as I'm speaking uh, so there's going to quite a few things coming and I did, I've mentioned it uh, I'll mention it later on in the unedited bit but uh, uh, Patreons and channel members do get early ad free access to these uh, videos that are coming up so check those out as well and I shall jump back to the original recording of the, uh, the bench uh, update all right, I'll uh, wrap up there just to say if you aren't subscribed to the channel and about half of you who watch these aren't, please do hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Uh, I'm trying to at the moment to get towards 9,000 subscribers, so every little helps. If you aren't subscribed, please do subscribe. If you want to help the channel out, hit the Patreon uh, page as well. Check that out. Uh, 
uh, it's just every every bit of uh, money that I take in from Patreon and from channel membership all goes back into making more videos and more content and it really helps out. So if you do want to support the channel, please do uh, go through uh, there and check those out. You'll get early ad-free access to videos, uh, the Friday videos and also other bits and pieces as well. So do check those out and as I say, you know, if you are already a Patreon, thanks a million. I know a few people joined recently. Thank you very much for joining. And I will uh, leave it at that. I'll say uh, goodbye and see you in the next uh, Bench Report hobby updates.